Hi guys, welcome to Original Gamers UK and this is part two of the rare games, collectible games in my collection. Uh, some of these are games that have like maintained or increased in value over the years, so some of them are rarer than others, but all of them are definitely collectible or on those systems, they're the games that everyone wants. So let's get straight into it with maybe uh, two games that you wouldn't expect to be collectible. I know for a few years that even though, as I say, they were games that people would want on the console, they they weren't as expensive as they are now. But with a certain mobile game that came out, I think like last year, it definitely boosted the popularity right back, and now they go for like, on average, 45, 50 pounds for a complete boxed uh, game with manual. And that is Pokemon Red and Blue for the Game Boy. Let me just get both of these out here. So I say, these are both uh, complete there we go. I mean, what can I say about these games that hasn't already been said? Like, there's there's nothing more I need to say. If you, like, if you're a gamer, especially from my era, you've definitely played on them or played on the card games or watched a TV show, anything of those. I mean, th these this game, this one's this one's mine, by the way, and that one's actually my brother's, and he was kind enough to to give it me when. I developed this slight obsession with, with gaming, so um, yeah, but incredible games. Maybe one day I'll go for like the complete set and have Pokemon Yellow. Simon actually has um, Pokemon Yellow, but yeah, so Pokemon Red and Blue. If, yeah, if you look on eBay now, um, you'd be quite surprised at how expensive they can they can go for. So if you've got one sitting at home or and you we were wanting to make some money and it doesn't really matter you having the the boxes definitely try and sell them because you will make um, you'll be quite happy with what you get. And one of the rare games on the Game Boy Advance. There's two in the same series, but I'll show you this one first because this is the first game I ever played in this series, and it still is probably my second or third favourite in Fire Emblem, and that is Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. So not only was it my first um, Fire Emblem experience. It was also the first game I had on the Game Boy Advance, so that, that was a good day. Definitely a good day. Um, I, I, I'm thinking, at the top of my head, um, Radiant Dawn is definitely my favourite. Then it's either Path of Radiance or this, and I can't quite, can't quite decide which one's my favourite. Um, then we have the rarest one of them all. Well, not, not actually particularly rare, just definitely the most expensive and the most sought after of all the Fire Emblems. And that is Fire Emblem Path of Radiance on the GameCube. Definitely a, a game now that more and more people want after playing Awakening Fates, getting into the series, and then they want to go and play all the previous iterations. And they may read it about Radiant Dawn, even though it's my personal favourite. They may be like, oh, that's considered to be crap. And it's a lot cheaper. But then they come to this one and they're like, this is considered to be like good with high reviews and everyone wants it, and that just ups the price. Not much to be said, Fire Emblem in its first um, 3D, uh, 3D outing. And damn, is this a good game? I said that it was a hard, it's hard to toss up between this and Sacred Stones, but I just think the nostalgia of the Sacred Stones being the first one I played is the reason why I've got to give it to give it to that. And another GameCube game, um, I'll give you a clue. Most people would have experienced this first on the PlayStation. That's where a lot of people consider this franchise's home to be is on the PlayStation. And we all know a certain person who has left the company, well basically made to leave that shitty company, Konami, um, to go make Death Stranding. So that is Metal Gear Solid, uh, the Twin Snakes on GameCube. The definitive edition of this game, <laughs> and that shows you the, uh, I'm actually playing it on the GameCube uh, right now, um, but there's the, there's the second disc to it. So I do have the first disc, have the manual to it. Yeah, so, even though most people played it on the PlayStation, the GameCube version is the one to have. And now, this wasn't one that I got back when I was playing GameCube, so I had to pay um, you know, a decent price for it. But the thing is with, with this and Radiant Dawn, uh, this and Path of Radiance, they just keep going up in price anyway. So, yeah, get them now where you can, because with the retro games, as we all know, they're just going to keep keep going up in price. Okay, so we're going to go back to the, the most retro game that I have for the Master System. It is an adventure role-playing game. This game's actually older than me. And that is East the Vanished Omens. 
not the rarest game on the Master System, but it's definitely up there. It's like an affordable price, but you definitely want to be either into the series or quite a serious collector to have something like this. I think I was quite lucky. I'm trying to remember where I came across this. And I, I got it for I think I got it for about fifteen pounds, which is which is really good because it's um, complete and boxed. Because you can definitely play a lot more uh, than that. Um, so there, really, really simple. It doesn't even say just, just literally ease. And then the manual. I'm not going to get it out because you know they're they're fragile things now. So happy to have that in my collection. Now we have a Dreamcast game, and it is an RPG. It's probably not the game that you're thinking of, even though I do have that game. Maybe we'll save that for another time. And that is Grandia 2. This game with the um, the VGA, uh, VGA cable looks really, really good here. Maybe that's because it was one of the first games I ever played with the VGA cable, but it does look pretty damn, pretty damn stunning. Um, an underrated or maybe not as well known. I think it's probably because it's not as well known uh, RPG series, but I, I really really like it. Um, I definitely like to play on some more of them. So it'd be nice if we got that. I like any any more on some modern consoles, I would definitely pick up uh, Grandia. And yet again, you can see that I'm enjoying it. The disc is actually in the Dreamcast. Let me get that. So there's the. There's the disc. That's why <laughs> I didn't realize it was like, oh, I'm playing, playing like Metal Gear, got Grandia 2 in. I'm like, I'm going to this video and I'm like, I've not even got half the games out. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm really well prepared. I've got, all, I've got all the boxes ready, got all the manuals ready. I'm not even realizing that the discs aren't in them. And then I thought I'd end on something a bit, bit bigger as a retro rare game. And that is a game on the PlayStation 2. So a rare game on PlayStation 2. It is not PAL format, it is American uh, format, so I can only play it in my American PS2. And this is a collector's edition for this game. And that is Grolancer Generations Deluxe. I picked this up quite a few years ago um, when I went to America and went to New York for my 21st. And this is something that I bought on on my uh, on my birthday. And the contents of this are one of the like coolest, most unique, quirky, some of the quirkiest yeah, items in a collector's edition that I've, that I've ever seen. Uh, so we'll go through them, but yeah, here's the, here's the box. Um, so even though it's a bit tatty, the thing was, if I wanted a pristine one, I had to pay about $100 more. And for me, it was just nice, the fact that I was going to be able to play it. It had everything in it, just for a few scruffs on the box, when everything else is mint condition, I didn't want to go up, um, pay all that. I'd rather spend it on some more games. And then you can kind of see a quick preview of what's what's going to be done. One of the reasons I know about this game is uh, working designs, and working designs make so many of the games or translate so many of the games that I absolutely love. So let's just open this up and see what kind of things we've got in here. So. We obviously have the game, dual discs, because it's multiple games, and the manual, stunning manual. And I've said this before, but uh, having manuals, and especially like in colour, fully detailed, this is what working designs are known for, this is why it's sick. And it's, uh, you can see this move a bit higher for you, some of the characters. one of my favourites, Ernest. And I'll show you the main characters. Yeah. And it also has the uh, the name of a character from my favourite series, my favourite game, which is Ween. So yeah, it's that. Very nice manual, as I say, mint condition. And then that's some shit. <laughs> and then the dual discs. 
so yeah. And then the only other kind of standard thing we have in the Collector's Edition is the soundtrack. And it's a very good soundtrack. Yeah, again, this cool artwork. And then you can kind of see the disc just poking out there. And then let's get on some of the unique things in this Collector's Edition. Let's start off with the pack of cards. I'm not going to open it all, but just a nicely presented pack of cards. You'll get the um, the reason why it's got a ring on the front in a minute. Because rings are a big part of part of the game. And then you've got the characters on either side. And then what do we have in here? We have like a keychain or a neck chain. And it's actually got the ring on the end. I feel like Frodo Baggins right now. My precious. It's even got it. It's actually even got um, inscribed on the middle, uh, on the inside. I'll show you. Grand Generations, which I'm not sure you can really see. Oh, I'll have close a bit later. That that'll be the best thing to do. On this chain, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, one of my favourite things from a collector's edition. Even though it's not something I'd wear, I just think it's really, really unique, and it, it looks really high quality. That's what I like. And then the last thing, so it has Grand Generations, and then the bottom it has working designs. And that lovely embossed writing that they put on everything. And that is a Grolancer watch. So I think you can see um, the game by itself, um, even that format with the two discs, isn't that expensive, but the collector's edition is what gives it the rarity and actually having every single part of it. You can see there's like loads of different things to it. Um, yeah, so this was a definite buy. I wanted to get the game while I was there, never but to actually see the collector's edition. So maybe if you live in America, maybe you know you kind of would see these fairly frequently. I'm not sure, um, but for us, I say it's not even playable. It's not even power format. So for when I saw it, I was like, I've gotta get that. So guys, I hope you um, enjoyed looking at the next batch of rare games that I have. I'm going to have close-ups of some of the stuff I've just shown you and I will see you guys soon.